Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about milling PCBs with a CNC machine. So this is a PCB that I milled with a CNC machine. Um, here's another one. This is a signal generator. And what it basically is, is you can make your own circuit boards um, at home. So this particular one plugs into a breadboard and then gives me buttons that I can push. So this video is just going to go over the basics quickly and then I have a companion write-up that goes into details. So you can think of this video as getting a taste and seeing if you're interested in learning more and if you are, the text that I wrote up and linked in the video will give you all the details that you need. So let's get into why would you do this when you can order PCBs from a fab and it's quite affordable. And the main reason is turnaround time. You can take a idea from, you know, nothing to a completed product in the span of a day with this. Where here, uh, you have to wait for them to make it and send it to you. And this is also cheaper. Um, one of these boards that you cut out of costs about a dollar. And depending on the size of your project, you can cut multiple things out of it. Whereas something like this, you can expect to pay between, I don't know, 20 and $60. And usually they have a minimum number and things like that. But keeping the focus on the main advantage, it's getting things back quickly. Which is great for prototyping, because when you're prototyping, um, it's no fun having to wait for... Uh, a delivery. You just want to do your stuff. So with that, let's get on to the first steps of the process. I'm going to take it all the way through um, from beginning to end, um, kind of glossing along steps along the way. Let's get started. All right, let's start with the design software. So I'm using software called KiCad. And here it is. I used to use a program called Eagle, but um, Eagle was, has been kind of stagnant for a while, and they've been putting a lot of work into KiCad, and a lot of people recommended it, so I switched a couple years ago, and it took some time to get used to it, but I really like it now. But anyway, the editor you use is not so important because you can always export the same Gerber files in the end. So here is the design for that switch that I showed. Pretty simple. You have four input pins four output pins and four switches no ground connections or anything like that um, pretty straightforward um, you can click on one of these and hit E and it will show you some properties uh, one of the more important ones is the footprint so for this one I'm using a drill um, footprint but as you can see I could pick others if I wanted to Um, and for the push buttons, I actually couldn't find one that matched the push buttons I'm using, so I drew my own, and that is one of the things I really like about KiCad is sometimes mine has a bug where this doesn't want to show up. There we go. Um, you can draw your own pretty easily. And I should mention that KiCad is free software, and it's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, but this only took a couple minutes to draw myself. And that's really nice if you have a part and want to make the pads bigger or, you know, do something custom. So, moving on. This is what the finished PCB looks like. It's pretty straightforward. We just have these pins, these pins... Um, the four buttons and some wiring. I've already done this, but oh yeah, the other thing I'll mention is the origin is up here. That's your zero zero point on your CNC machine. You can change that later in flat cam, but um, doing it here means you don't have to remember. And the other thing is if you go to board setup there's a constraints. Here you can pick your minimum clearance and track width. 
You should pick these depending on which bit you plan on using on the CNC machine. Because some of the easier to work with bits have cut wider and you can accompany or you can accommodate that by setting this number to your bit width. Um, so keep these two in mind, minimum clearance and minimum track width. Clearance will be how wide is allowed between um, nets and track width is how narrow the tracks are allowed to be and both are useful when getting comfortable with CNC. All right, so let's finish up with this program. So you just say plot. The only layers we need are front copper and edge cuts. All this mask and silk screen and stuff are used by fabs, but we don't need them. Um, you could use them, like export them as a SVG or something if you wanted to print a label for your um, design, but I'm not going to get into that because it's kind of a separate thing. So we have this, this, and we have a directory. Um, use drill place file origin. If you forget to click this, you'll have to fix that in, um, in the next program we're going to use, but that uses this um, origin here that we picked. Otherwise, it'll use the 00 of the page. And everything else looks good. So let's plot. Okay, it created these files here. Uh, copper, Edge, and a Gerber job, which we're not going to use. This one has holes, so we're going to also want to make a drill file for that. So we go here. Um, yeah, millimeters, uh, that same drill place file origin. Um, all these defaults look good. Generate. Okay, so that's all that. So now we're done with this program. Uh, like I said, you can use other programs like Eagle or other software as long as you can make these files, and they all pretty much can. Um, you can move on to the next step. So let's do that. So there is a lot of ways to take the files I just made and turn them into um, a CNC job. But the program I'm going to use is FlatCam because it's free. So here we go, we're starting up flat cam. Okay. So first thing we want to do is save. And I'm just going to overwrite this old one. I have all this uh, inversion control in Git. That's why I'm not worried about overwriting files and things like that, because when I'm done, I'll just restore everything. <laughs> and I recommend that. That way you can also take snapshots along the way. So let's go ahead and load up those Gerbers that we made. So those, these are the ones I just exported. Open. So there they are. You can see this red line is the origin, right where I put it. If for some reason it's in a different spot and you want to move it, you can use this here to change the origin to wherever you want. So this is the zero, zero point on the CNC machine, where wherever your bit is when you start the job, that's where the, that's the starting point. All right, let's add on in the drill files, uh, plated hole and non-plated hole. We're going to get an error when I click on this because we don't have any non-plated holes, but we can ignore the error. See, there's the error. It says you don't have any holes, which we already knew that. Okay, so we got our holes. Now we have all the data loaded into the program, so we'll just go ahead and save it. Now, we'll take things one thing at a time, so you can... Disable plot, and that will just hide it, but it's still there. So I like to do that um, just so I can focus on the task at hand. Okay, so here's our copper layer. We're going to create isolation traces, which is basically telling the bit to cut around these things. So let's do that. So click on properties, and it gives you a bunch of choices. Um, we, the one we want is isolation routing. These other things are for other tasks. So we'll click on that, and here you can pick what kind of bit you want and all that. Through experience, I found what I like to do is just say custom bit and put in the width that it's going to cut. You have to pick a width that's 
less than what you picked in KiCad or it will refuse to make some traces. So I picked 0.4 in KiCad, so here I'm just going to pick 0.39. Okay, passes, this is the number of times you want to go around. I usually pick three. You could pick one, your, your cut will be quicker, but you'll have less, it'll be less forgiving to solder, and um, there's a higher chance you might have a short, things like that. So you can decide what you want to do there. 25 overlap, this is how much each pass overlaps the other. Because we're cutting with a V bit, if you set this too low, there'll be like little micro tracks in between the passes. Um, this is fine, this is fine. Um, all this is fine. So we can just say generate geometry. And there we go. It made our three tracks with an overlap of 25%. Okay. And that also created a new geometry object here. All right. On to properties. So now we're this created a geometry object. Now we actually have to make a CNC G code file. So here we have to give it more information. So this is how deep you want it to cut. Negative 0.05 millimeters is a good depth. Travel Z is how high you float over when you're not cutting. This is how fast you cut. This is how fast you plunge into the material. This is spindle speed. You don't want this to be zero. Someday I'll have to figure out how to make the default not zero. But some number like that. The machine I use, uh, that just says go all out, so you'll probably get about 7,500 RPM-ish. I haven't measured it. Um, change parameters. This is how high you want the bit to be when it's done. And this is if you want it to move x, y. I like it to move it back to the origin, so I usually put in that. And then preprocessor, uh, you can set this for a whole bunch of different machines. I actually made my own, um, but you might pick Gerbil 11 no M6 or Gerbil 11. I'll just pick my own because it expedites the process. If I pick this, it puts a T1 code in there that I have to manually go in and delete, and that takes extra time. Um, actually, I'll just do it there. Okay, it's it's better to see the errors because you will run into problems, and you know it's just part of the the process is running into problems and fixing them. All right, so we did all that, and we'll just click generate CNC object. So there's the cuts that it's going to make, and you can actually see the yellow where it's going to. Um, that's the hover where it's going to hover over. Okay, the only thing left to do is save. And I'll just overwrite the old one that I already made. It doesn't really matter because, like I said, um, this is all inversion control. All right, so we're done with the isolation cuts. So there's our um, CNC job, so I'll just disable. It's still there. I can bring it back if I want. I just disabled it. Okay, and I'll disable the geometry because we don't care about that anymore. And let's lurk on the drills next. So we'll enable those, okay? And we're clicked on. Now we go properties, it's all different now. Um, and we want the drill tool. Excelsion editor is actually useful in more advanced cases because sometimes this cable, this table will be big and have a whole bunch of different sizes and you just wanna make it simpler. Or sometimes there'll be holes you don't actually want made. So all that allows you to change the holes um, to get what you want without having to go back to KiCad and re-export. So let's do drilling tool. This is how deep you want to cut or drill, I should say. Negative 1.7 is fine. My board is negative 1.6. Uh, float, how fast you want to drill. Spindle speed, again, 10,000. Offset adds to cut Z if you have like a tapered thing or you could just add it directly here. So I'm not sure why that's there. Um, tool change Z, same. End move XY, we'll go to the origin. And pro preprocessor, uh, that one will be consistent. And generate, okay? There's our holes and our paths. So we'll save 
and we'll overdo the drill and done. Yes. Okay. Hide that. Um, let's go ahead and hide this too. Okay. Let's make the edge cuts up here and then we'll do this final edge cut region. We'll cut around the outside. So we pick edge cuts and uh, properties. So in this case, we want the cutout tool. So we'll click on the cutout tool. And the cut depth, um, 1.7. Otherwise, it might make a little groove in my table. Um, Multi-depth, uh, this cuts, this makes the cut in multiple passes instead of one. And that's how deep it cuts per pass. This, you want this because otherwise, uh, you might be taking on too much load on your bit. This is how much margin to make around the outside. And this is how big your your bridges are going to be. We're not going to use bridges because I'm going to use a tape down method, which I'll show you. Oh yeah, and this is your tool diameter. Um, anywhere between two and three, you could go 3.5 if you want, it's fine. Just pick whatever you're going to end up using. Um, so there you go, generate geometry. Oh, <laughs> so in this case, I accidentally left the gaps on. So you can see it made gaps there. I didn't want that. So what I'm going to do is go back here and get rid of this geometry. I'm going to delete it. Okay, it's gone. Now I can go back here and set that to none and rerun it. And there we go. That's what I want for my cut. Okay, moving on. Um, so this is the CNC part, um, cut depth, multi-depth. Okay, there's a little bit of a trick here. When I change preprocessor, watch what it does. This is a bug probably. It got rid of my multi-depth. <laughs> Click that back on, please. Um, spindle speed, 10,000, and... Everything looks fine. Generate. Okay. Save. Edge cuts. Save. Replace. So the next thing I'm going to do is... There we go. Okay. Is validate. So I went to export. And if I do a... Those are the files that I made. So I'm going to run a program I wrote called the validator, which I'm giving away for free. Uh, it's not very complicated, but it can save you breaking bits. So I'm going to run it. Test manager and uh, not that one. CNC PCB tools. Okay, check PCB CU and then I'll just give it this CU file. Okay, so what this did is it checked my file for problems. So if I had a typo in there, I told it to cut too deep, I'm cutting outside the board, something that would cause problems on the actual machine, it will blow up. And it did blow up because I have a T1 in my file. And my particular machine doesn't like T1. So let's go look at the G code. Let's look at all the G codes and get rid of those T1s. It's T1, I guess. Okay, we'll get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. And like I said, when I make my uh, flat cam pro profile, I made a special one that doesn't have the T1 in it. So I never actually have to do this, but I'm just doing it for the purpose of this video. Okay. So now they should all be gone. So let's run it. Okay, everything's good. So now I'll run the drill one. Uh, which one is it? This one. Okay, that one looks good. And let's do the edge cuts. That one. <laughs> okay. This one, um, 
was OK, but it also created this test file. And if you look at this, what this does is it just draws a rectangle around the edge of my design at z equals 0. What's that good for? Well, I'm going to show you what this is good for when we're at the actual machine. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we're all done at the computer. This computer, what I would do at this point is check it into version control and check it out on the um, machine I'm actually going to cut with. But if you want to, you could just put it on a USB key or however you want to do it. So, yep, yeah, that's the end of the computer work. Let's go to the machine. All right, let's talk about the machine a little bit and get it set up. So this is a Sane Smart 3018 CNC machine. It's um, probably on the upper end of CN of the cheap CNC machines. Um, I got this one for 260 on sale, I think. You can get ones for much less than that, probably like 150. That'll get the job done just as well. Things you might be giving up on are um, this one has a pretty pretty good controller I think um, it's got limit switches you won't get those on a cheap one it's got um, nice um, anti whatever you want to call it keeping the material in here um, and for all that you know you'll save maybe a hundred bucks or something so that's totally up to you um, you'll also need these <coughs> copper um, material that you can cut into. These are the uh, 7 by 10 centimeters. The next time I buy these, I'm going to get bigger ones. so that uh, Because I found once you put the board down, you can cut multiple projects out of it. And the bigger the board is, the more projects you can do. So I'm just going to take one of these out. And this is what they look like. So you could um, try to um, clamp that down. But the problem is if you do that, it might bow up in the center. And this is a precision operation if you want good results. So instead, I use the tape and glue method. So I'm going to go through that real quick. So all you need to do for that is take a piece of tape make it bigger than your board and then you just set it down in the middle whatever as long as your bit can reach everywhere you need it to you're good and I usually do this you know just to get it as flat as I can make sure I'm still in camera here yep then I take another one And I stick it on the back of here, make sure that's somewhat clean. Stick it on the back. And the same thing. Okay. Now take some glue and just make little zigzags. So the thing is, you don't want to get too close to the edge or the glue will leak through. Um, but you want to have enough so that it actually sticks. Okay. Usually I'll press it down and then wait 20 minutes. But today I'm going to use this Insta Set stuff, which will make it set instantly. So you just spray it on there and line it up the best you can. And then you push it down. And again, I'll just try to get it down there real well. And that's it. So now it's not going to bow up in the center because it's being held down everywhere. The other advantage is that I can cut pieces out without making tabs because the, it's held down everywhere. The next step is to solder on this little piece of wire. 
And what that is going to do is allow us to probe, do Z probe and create a height map. So I'm just going to solder it right there to the corner. So let's do that real quick. So I've got my soldering iron heated up and we'll just make a little landing pad for it. And then I'll grab some tweezers so that I can hold it. And then I will make sure it's on there. And that's it. Okay. So now we'll just bend this up a little bit. Okay. So that is going to be where the, you probably can't see it on the camera, but I soldered it there. And that is going to be where one of these probes goes. I'll take the camera off and show you closer. So there you can see where it's going to connect. So I just take one of these here and connect it like this. Okay easy and then the other one will go on the bit after I add the bit and these go all the way around to the back and they plug in back there let's see if we can see it right back there there's a spot for them to plug in into the controller and when that's all hooked up the controller will be able to tell when the bit is touching that so let's go ahead and pick a bit and mount it on the machine. So here's a bunch of bits that I would consider viable choices. They all have their trade-offs. Let's start with the ones that come with the machine. So these are cheap 20 degree flat cut bits that look like this. Yeah. And they are cheap, and they don't actually have cutting flutes. Um, it's just cut off flat. These work, and they can make fine detail, but they're not really designed for the job, so you'll be breaking bits um, a lot more often and more randomly than with other choices. The 30-degree bits are basically the same thing except that they're a 30 degree instead of a 20 degree um, end. And I would say these work a little better than the 20, but not a lot better because the tip is still quite fine and easy to break. But a lot of people go with these and seem to like them. The next one I'll talk about, these are the high end bits. Those other bits were a buck a bit or less these are about 15 a bit so this is a specialty bit that I'll link in the description but you can see it has hopefully see it has an actual cutting flute and it's designed to cut PCBs and it cuts at a 45 it has a 45 degree cutting angle so depth is a little bit important um, this gives excellent results and it lasts a long time but if you make a mistake um, It'll break just as quickly and easily as any other bit. So I don't recommend going straight to these. I recommend graduating to these after you've really confident about your process, if you're interested in saving money. So these are the ones that I would recommend for beginning and general use. Um, so you can see it actually has a flute um, and a cutting edge which is great it's 20 degrees and the tip on it although they say is 0.1 I'd say it's 0 0.25 0 0.3 maybe it's definitely a wider cutting blade but this also makes it more robust so normally I would go with these expensive ones but for the purpose of this video I'm gonna go with this one because it works fine and for this particular project that we're doing which is this guy it's going to be just fine
Okay, I have everything loaded up onto the machine. I have a program called Candle Running. I have the bit that I talked about installed, and I have the probe connected to it and the plate. So there'll be electrical contact when it touches. So the next thing we're going to do is zero the machine. So I'm going to kind of move the camera so that we can see the laptop a little better. Um, maybe we can get kind of both in there. Okay, that's probably the best I'll be able to do without two cameras. So going over to Candle, let me go over here so we can see the controls. We pick Unlock, okay, and then there's this Jog section. So what we're going to do is get the bit in the right place. So I'll change this to continuously. And then you can see me moving the machine and the head. And I'm going to put it below that um, below that solder point, just a couple of millimeters, so that when I cut out the outline, it doesn't interfere. Okay, taking a look, it looks like we can come down a little bit. I want to make sure we don't actually touch it. Okay, so now we can use this Z probe option, which will finish the job for us. Click. Okay, so that found the exact um, surface and then moved it up. So it says Z equals 1.00. And let me show you that better. It says Z equals 1.00 and XY is some number. So I just click here to 0 XY and now I'm at 0, 0, 1. So that's the bit at 0, 0, 1. Okay? So that's a good starting position. Now we're going to create a height map. So you go over. For now, I'm going to open up my test piece that I made. So let's go to the breadboard buttons. And there's my test file. So I'll open that. And there it is. So you can see where the bit is. And that's how it's going to cut. Okay, but we're not going to cut. This is just for testing. So what we do is we, I usually close this so I don't accidentally click on it. Now there's this height map section and we can say create. After we see create, it, there's a grid there of points that it's going to sample. So basically the board here probably isn't perfectly level or perfectly flat or anything. So this is gonna to try to compensate for that so we can still cut right at the surface. So first thing I do is these are the dimensions which are wrong, so I'm gonna click auto. And those are the correct dimensions of the board now. So now we gotta decide how many grid points we want. Well, we probably want them about a centimeter apart or so. So for that, I would say three and three. Okay, so there's going to be, it's gonna to touch down in nine places, and each one will be about a centimeter apart. And then I usually change interpolation grid to three, three as well. Okay, so there we go. Now I'll click on probe, and it's going to start collecting data. So here we go. It's actually finding all those places. And as it does it, it fills numbers in on this grid here, which says relative to zero what it's finding. Okay, we're done. So the starting point, it's pretty close to zero, so that's usually a good sanity check. And then the other ones are deeper into the board. All right, let's save and then test the height map. So the next thing we're going to do is go to File, 
save, and I'm just going to call it height dot map. Okay, now I can exit edit mode. And there's this use height map here, which you can click on or not click on. I don't know if you can see it, but as I click and unclick, the display changes ever so slightly as an indication that it's using it. But we're not actually going to use this one first. We're going to use a modified one. So <laughs> before I do anything else, well, yes, I want, I need to remove these probes here. Now is a good time to do that because if I forget, then the blade will start spinning with them on there, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not great. Okay. Cause we don't need them anymore. All right. Back to this. So we have this height map file. I'll make this bigger. Um, okay. So we have this height map file. If I go into it, it's really simple. All it is is just that grid in kind of a CSV format, but they just put semicolons. So you could come in here and like manually change this if you wanted, but I wrote a real simple tool that does it for me. So it's in that same tools directory. I'll have it linked in the video. Candle height map adjust. I don't remember how to call it off the hand, but if you just run it without parameters, it tells you. So input is height map. And then offset, I'm going to say 0 0.1. Okay, so it created a height map offset 0 0.1. So let's compare those. And it's hard to see, but I'll just say the numbers are shifted by 0 0.01. So now we can use either of these files. And we can also make as many other files as we want to shift things up and down slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that height map 0.1 file and use it. And I'm going to run a test cut with that. And my expectations are that it won't touch the material at all. At least reasonable expectations would be that. But in actuality, it sometimes doesn't work out that way. So let's run it and just see what happens. So I'm going to move so we can see. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the send button. So that's going to run that test program. And as we can see, it's already cutting. So that tells me that even when I'm, oh, actually I didn't use height map. Huh, I made a mistake. Okay, that's all right. I didn't say use height map and see how it's cutting into the material. So that was a mistake that I made but we can easily, I just click the abort button. So you can see here, um, I didn't click on use height map. So let's click on use height map. Okay. And let's go again. Okay. So far, it's not cutting. And by the way, all this cutting is happening outside of where we're going to finally cut. So it doesn't even matter. Okay, even at 0 .01 offset, we're cutting into it a little bit. 
So that tells me we need to go up even further. Not knowing that, I probably would have broken a bit. So this is extra off, but one thing I'm going to point out is even though it's um, not accurate, it is precise in that all the way around it's an even depth. So it's just off. So what we're going to do as a response to that is move it up even more. So I'll come back here. And unfortunately, because um, we've already cut, it's going to be hard to do another test. But looking at it, it doesn't look like it's cutting that far in. So I'm just going to bring it up another 0.1. So I'll say, or 0 0.05. So I'm going to bring it up 0.15. So now we have this file. And I will change it to 0.15. Okay, see how it... All right, now I'm going to load my actual design. Again, I could run the test, but it's going to be hard to get information from the test because it's already cut where it's cutting. So I'm just going to trust that this is the right setting. Um, I think it'll be high up enough to where it's not going to break the bid or anything like that. So um, it should be safe to run. All right, so there we go. So we're going to cut this first. Okay, <laughs> see how this was cleared out? 0.15. Use it. Okay. Now we'll come back here, click the send button, and watch it start to cut. And it looks like it's not quite cutting deep enough, but that's okay because we can just, when it's done, load up the other height map program and cut again. That's actually the great thing about being able to change the height map is that you can um, run it again. So I'm just going to let this finish and then we'll look at the results and then we'll run it again with the other height map pro setting. Alright, so it's done with that setting and as you can see it just barely scratched the surface, well it scratched the surface on parts and it didn't even touch on parts. So what we're going to do is change the height map from 0.15 to let's say 0.09 and go with that. So that'll cut a little bit deeper um, because we already kind of started the cut in those one places that's going to help protect the bit. And then in the places where we didn't cut yet, that should give us some contact. So, all we have to do now is open up this guy that we just made. And make sure we're using it. And then we just rerun. <laughs> And now it's touching everywhere. So I'll just let this whole thing cut and maybe play it back in fast motion. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to take some sandpaper, which is in the drawer right in front of the tripod, so I'll have to move that. Um, I like to use 400 grit and 1500 grit. 
haven't done a lot of experimentation in that area, but it seems to work. So you just, this just gets rid of any little burrs. Cheap bits will create more burrs than um, expensive, nice bits, but sandpaper can clean them up in either case. Okay. And then there's some sandpaper, or residue on there. So what I do for that is I'll just grab a towel. With some rubbing alcohol and just clean that off. Okay, looks good. Let's take a close look at what we have. So, yeah, looks good to me. Um, so the next thing I would normally do is take a multimeter and make sure that I don't have any shorts. But just looking at it, I'm pretty confident that I don't. Nice wide tracks there. All right, let's go to the next step, which is drilling some holes. For the rest of this process, I'm going to use this set of end mills. Um, you can get a whole set of them off Amazon for I don't know how much, but not very much, under 20 bucks. And it comes with this and another case of more of them. Um, ideally, you'd use drill bits to drill the holes, but I'm not going for ideal for this video. I'm going for what works. Um, kind of a minimum viable product, I'd say. And that would be this bit here. So this will drill holes for you. Again, they're not going to be as clean as what you'd get from a drill bit, but they'll be good enough. Um, so I'm going to load this into the machine, and we can watch it. We'll get it zeroed, and we'll watch it drill. I got the bit loaded into the machine. And back to the candle software, which I should have mentioned is free and available on Mac, Windows, and Linux, I believe. I know it's free. I think it's available on all those platforms. So we have our old file loaded still. So we want to load up the drill file. Okay, those are the holes it's going to drill. Whatever we do, so it's at 0, 0, 10. Whatever we do, we do not want to click on re zero x y, especially if it's not on there, or our holes are really going to be in the wrong spot. But we do need to re-zero Z because I have a different bit, um, which go is a different depth. So to do that, um, I'll bring up Jog again. And I will change this to single step and move down one and over one. I'm just looking for to get the bit over some untouched copper because I'm going to use the paper trick to zero. So now I'm going to click on this button here with 1 and get it close, and then I'm going to change that to point oh one. So let's do that. Let's get it down close. Not too close. It will break the bit. Okay, that's close enough for me. Now I'm going to put this in the tripod because I need both hands for this part. I'm going to change the step to point one, and I'm going to put the paper under here and slide it like this as I move down. You could also use the Z probe here, but you got to be careful that you don't accidentally put the bit in a place where there's it's been fully isolated, or you'll break the bit. So, and this is good enough for this stuff. Okay, it's it's good. So now, I click Z0 there, 0Z, zero Z, and then I'll just go up a couple, 1, 2. So Z is at 2 now. And now, I can take my paper out of there, and the machine is ready. X, Y, and Z are all calibrated. 
So let's go ahead and start it up and watch it drill. This is one of my favorite parts, by the way. All right, let's click on the send button. And we got all the holes right where they need to be. So, good news. Now there's just one more step, which is to cut the board out. So I'll go ahead and prep for that and then demonstrate. Okay, so for my cutout, I'm gonna use this two um, millimeter diameter bit. I know that in flat cam, I used a two four, but um, I'm using a file that I actually exported earlier, and I checked, and it says, the G-code said, the file says 2. So we're going to go with 2. Okay, let's load up the edge cut file. Right there. And we want to make sure it's going around three times. If we, somehow the multi-depth got unchecked, well, my checker program would have flagged it, but... Um, if you didn't run the checker program, you should make sure that it's going around multiple times because one pass would indicate that it's going to try to do it all in one go, which is probably not what you want. Again, we do not re-zero X and Y. That would mess things up. Um, we will re-zero Z. Um, in this case, it's probably not completely critical because these bits have these flanges, which are supposed to be the same... Um, distance away, but I'm just going to do it anyway. All right, so same process. I'm going to use the paper process. So we go to jog one, get it to a spot where it's good, um, bring it down one at a time until we're relatively close, then change it to point one and just move it while we shake the paper until it sticks. Okay, that's good. And we are at negative 0.1, so we could have probably used... Actually, I'll put it at zero, because it's pretty good here, too. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so we'll re-zero Z. Take it back up. Okay. And... We're ready to start cutting. Now, while I cut for this, I sometimes like to take the vacuum and follow along. Also, it's a good idea, maybe for all steps, <laughs> but especially for this one, to wear some sort of mask. I don't feel like particles are flying everywhere during this, but, you know, you'll see more particles here than you've seen before. So let's go ahead and get the process started. So there it all is, all cut out. Um, like I said, because we use the tape method, we don't need any tabs. So I'm just gonna take a quick picture of it um, for the write-up, and then we will get it out. To get it out, I just usually use a screwdriver just to try to lift up the edges gently. And that's it. Normally I would take the bit out of the way, but I forgot to do that this time and it didn't matter so it's all good okay so there's tape is still on the back but it just peels off because it's just tape there we go and there we have it we have a now we have a board that is ready 
to solder components to. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and I hope it helped you decide if you want to give this a try. I know for me it's definitely helpful. I mean I don't do all my boards this way but if I'm prototyping and want a board the same day or I just want a simple project um, I go this way. So if you enjoyed this video please give me a like and consider subscribing and have a great day. Thanks.